The iPhone X is no doubt Apple's flagship phone of 2017, but what about on the Android side? Well, Google just recently released their flagship phone for this year in the Google Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL. And we have both of them right here, and we're gonna go ahead and see how well these phones stack up against each other. Hey everyone, Dan with Mac Rumors, and this is the Pixel 2 XL versus the iPhone X. Now before we get started, I do wanna point out that although this is an Apple-centric channel, the views and opinions in this video are both unbiased and impartial. I do love Android and iOS equally, and I have no strong preference to either or. With that said, we're gonna start off with the design of each device, and both phones definitely follow the 27 trend of tall phone, less bezels, more display. The Pixel 2 XL has a six inch QHD P-OLED display, and although the bezels are kind of small, the Pixel 2 XL certainly has a bigger forehead and chin compared to other 2017 bezel-less flagships. The big reason for this is the inclusion of stereo front-facing speakers, which sounds so good that it might be worth the trade-off. The back of the phone is a mixture of glass and aluminum, with the top portion of the phone surrounding the camera and flash made up of glass, and the rest of the phone is aluminum. As much as I like the way this phone feels in the hand with the layout of the materials, the aluminum means no wireless charging, which is a bummer. Now, if this were any other year, I would not be making a statement about wireless charging up against an iPhone, because iPhones have never had wireless charging. Well, Apple arrived late to the party this year, and they included wireless charging in their all-new iPhone 8, 8 Plus, and of course the iPhone 10. Wireless charging has been around for many, many years in Android devices, and it's also been a nice to have for me, but having it in the iPhone is definitely a welcomed addition. With that said, this obviously means the iPhone 10 has an all glass back design. They also included dual cameras again, except this time they rotated them in a vertical position. It's an interesting look for sure, and I'm not totally a fan of it, but it is what it is. Now the front of the iPhone 10 is where things really get interesting. The iPhone X has a 5.8 inch Super Retina QHD OLED display, which is the first OLED on an iPhone, and like the Pixel 2 XL, the front of the iPhone X also has very minimal front and bottom bezel. Like, really minimal. Almost non-existent. Except, of course, when you notice the notch. Now, the notch is obviously not subtle, and Apple is seemingly totally fine with this design choice, because what it has packed inside that notch are a lot of cameras and sensors that make up a new feature called Face ID which we'll talk about more in a minute. This is also important because without Face ID, iPhone users would seemingly have no biometric protection to unlock their iPhone and keep their information safe. Because if you haven't noticed by now, the fingerprint sensor is no longer around. Regardless, the iPhone 10 form factor to me is much better than the Pixel 2 XL because it's not as tall or wide, so whatever's left of one hand usability in 2017 these days is much easier on the iPhone 10 as opposed to the Pixel 2 XL. So the iPhone 10 is essentially the screen of an iPhone 8 Plus packed into a slightly taller iPhone 8, which to me is the perfect size smartphone. Now that we know what the phone is like on the outside, what does each device pack underneath the hood? Well, without getting too involved with specs and performance benchmarks, they are both packing the best hardware that is currently available in 2017. Even though the chipsets are a bit different with the Pixel 2 XL carrying a Snapdragon 835 and the iPhone with their own A11 Bionic chip, the Pixel has four gigabytes of RAM compared to the iPhone's three, and they are both performance champs. Sure, if we were actually to break them down and do benchmarks, the iPhone X blows the Pixel 2 XL out of the water. However, I honestly do not notice much of a difference in real life use. Both phones get me through my day very well with minimal to no lag in performance at all. Speaking of getting me through the day, the Pixel 2 XL has a 3520 mAh battery, while the iPhone X only has a 2716 mAh battery, but battery life on the iPhone X has been near incredible. Most people judge battery life by how many hours your screen is on, and I'm not sure if that's the best way to judge battery life, but if we were to go by this, the screen on time for me on the iPhone X has been the highest ever for any phone, period. I've been getting in between seven and eight hours of screen on time in a single charge, which is nuts. Now these statistics of course apply to me in my use case, so some of these might be drastically different, either higher or lower in battery life, but I just want you guys to keep that in mind. For reference, the Pixel 2 XL gets me a modest, but great for Android, four to five hours of screen on time, because whenever I use an Android phone, for some reason, I can never seem to get higher than four to five hours, but I've seen people also get seven to eight hours, so again, battery life for me for both phones have been great. 
Finally, before we move on from the design and hardware category, we need to talk about the displays. For those of you who do not know, Google made a pretty terrible display in the Pixel 2 XL. Now I've been on record stating that the blue tint, while is awful in a phone of this price range, it's really not that bad. It's only noticeable if you look at your phone at a certain angle, and I never really look at my phone at these specific angles, so all around it just doesn't bother me. I am, however, not a fan of the color profile that Google went with. Now, at the time of this video, I have not received the update yet for the new color profiles, but as of right now, color profiles on the Pixel 2 XL have been really inaccurate and should not happen on a $900 plus phone. The iPhone X's display, while being the first journey into OLED, I'm actually super impressed with the iPhone X's resolution. Sure, the notch is not great, but I'm not kidding when I say that you will forget about it after a while of use. The only times you are reminded of the notch is when apps are not updated to support the new resolution and you get these awful black bars. Then it's kind of obnoxious. The display is plenty bright and is, well, it looks like a normal Apple display, which is a good thing. So next up, I want to talk about some of the standout features that the iPhone X and the Pixel 2 XL might have to offer. And there aren't really a lot because these phones don't have a lot of flashy features like the S Pen with the Note 8 or the modular accessories that Motorola has to offer in their flagships. That's not to say that there aren't any features worth talking about. With the iPhone X, there are a couple of stars of the show. One we just mentioned being the all-new design and display. We also mentioned the notch, but we didn't talk about the positives that the notch gives us. The cameras and sensors hidden underneath the glass is capable of giving us Apple's newest feature, Face ID. Now, facial recognition is nothing new in the smartphone world, but this is by far the best implementation of this feature. It works pretty consistently and is capable of adapting to any changes you might have with your facial features, like radically new hairstyle, beard, clean shaven, etc. Face ID, of course, replaced Touch ID, which even though I do think Face ID is pretty incredible, I don't think it's necessary. I would have personally loved to see Apple figure out a way to get a fingerprint sensor embedded in the display somehow, or maybe just throw it on the back like Google did with the Pixel 2. The Apple logo would have been a perfect place for it, honestly. Nevertheless, Face ID is here, and who knows for how long, but it's still a pretty fast and secure option to unlock your phone, enter in passwords, etc. The True Depth camera also brings way to a new feature called Animojis. So by now you've probably seen a bunch of Animoji karaoke videos or people sending you these in texts, but in a nutshell, the facial recognition software can map your face and expressions and plaster it right there on these emojis. You can then record a 10 second message and send it off to your family and friends. It's pretty cool and I'm not gonna pretend like it's not. Of course, there are other applications out there that utilize a true depth camera technology, but it's mostly Snapchat, Instagram, and FaceApp at the moment. Aside from what we just mentioned, the only other radical differences are the new swipes and gestures that an iPhone X user will need to learn in order to navigate about their device. But like the notch, it's pretty easy to get used to. The Pixel 2 XL is also a pretty ordinary device, which again is not a bad thing. There's not a lot of flashy features, but instead Google put a huge emphasis on their software and AI components. Like Apple and Siri, Google has the Google Assistant, which in my opinion is a better option than Siri, but that's an argument for a different day. Android enthusiasts are always drawn to Google Nexus and now Pixel devices because of the great hardware to go along with its vanilla Android software experience. This is Android the way it was intended, no bloatware or useless apps or features. Of course, a huge feature to Android over iOS is the amount of customization a user could choose to do. Everywhere from launcher replacements, different icon packs, widgets on your home screen, shortcut toggles everywhere, a better notification management system, etc. There are loads of apps that focus on Android customization, and Apple is just not anywhere close in this department. To be honest, I'm not sure that they really care either. Regardless, this is what makes Android appealing to me and other users. With that said, Google did include a semi-flashy feature called Active Edge. By squeezing the sides of your phone, you can launch right into the Google Assistant. That's really it. It's definitely a much easier way to access Google Assistant, but unfortunately, you can't remap this feature to do anything else. Actually, that's not true at all. Of course you can, because with Android, there are so many modders and developers who create apps and services for specific reasons like this. Downloading this app allowed me to remap the Active Edge to open up YouTube instead of Google Assistant, because that's the beauty of Android. The last feature we need to talk about are the cameras. Both devices offer similar camera features like portrait modes, where you can go and create great depth of field and get that blurred background effect. Both phones now offer this feature in their front-facing cameras as well. Now the iPhone X uses a dual camera system to accomplish this, but Google went with a more interesting approach and decided to use one camera and then software to make up for that second lens. The results are actually really impressive. I personally think both phones take incredible pictures and videos with their main cameras, 
but where Google shines is with its front-facing or selfie camera's portrait mode. It does a much better job at removing some of the artifacts caused by image processing when blurring the background around the subject. Or in other words, it doesn't blur my hair or clothing as often as, say, the iPhone X's camera. It's not perfect, but it's certainly the better of the two options. With the iPhone X, you do get some pretty impressive 4K 60 frames per second video, as well as studio lighting effects, which can create some pretty cool looking portraits. In a nutshell, both phones are capable of taking some really great photos and videos, but I'm way more impressed by the fact that Google was able to accomplish the same thing that the iPhone X can with only one camera. Google and Apple both created amazing smartphones for 2017, and if you're a fan of either company, you won't be disappointed. I do recommend going with the XL over the smaller 2, but I will say the display issues on the 2 are not as bad as the XL, so keep that in mind. Both of these phones have their flaws, as there really is no such thing as a perfect smartphone, but each phone has pretty good battery life, takes great photos, and has cool new features that will drive your friends crazy. I'm looking at you, and emojis. All around, they just do what a smartphone needs to do in 2017, and they do them quite well. I can't sit here and recommend which one to buy over the other, because ecosystem and platform preference play a vital role in which phone you should buy. They are two totally different operating systems and are intended for a slightly different person. If you want a new iPhone, the 10 is the way to go. If you want an Android phone, then the Pixel 2 XL is Android at its finest. Now this sounds like a cop-out to not declare a winner, but it's the best advice I can give you. They are both mega expensive investments, but whichever one you end up choosing should make you a happy customer. So what are your thoughts on each of these phones? Are you planning on picking up either the Google Pixel 2 XL or the iPhone 10? Let us know in the comments section down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.